Coach Andersi, we have the postseason Kent State Wrestling Talk. And the Golden Flashers right now have one auto qualifier to Tulsa, Oklahoma to the Division I NCAA Championships. Is that correct? As of right now, we definitely have one. So, yes. So, right now, it is a senior captain, six-year senior from Massachusetts, Jake Ferry. Made, he brought a bid to the tournament, to the conference, and he made the finals, and he got the, he defended his bid for true second, correct? 100%. You know, he wrestled uh, Noto in the finals. Um, it was the best Noto look the whole tournament. So I watched every one of his matches pretty closely. And uh, he looked pretty good against Jake. He didn't look as as well-oiled in, in his two previous matches. Um, beat Jake. And then uh, Jake came back and had to wrestle for a true second, which sometimes is a very hard thing to do. Um, I know that from experience because I did it once. So did I. You made me do it. You made me do it. <laughs> he did. Um, but at the end of the day, he ended up winning a very close match um, to a guy he beat pretty handily the first time. That's usually how it goes when you uh, when you wrestle these wrestlebacks or the, these true seconds. Well, it's really tough because it doesn't come for team points, but it's for the spot. It's for the yeah. you know the bid because it yeah. goes on. If it's an odd amount, you can have a true fourth, true six. Depends how many. I mean, uh, the Big Ten had a true eleventh place match at one fifty seven. You know, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy to think that that you can be uh, still wrestling for that. But you had two finalists, six placers overall. Um, Enrique Munguia, uh, it looked like Enrique was not finishing the street season super strong. We, You and I couldn't figure it out. We talked about it. And then comes to the MAC tournament, and he's ready to go, right? Yeah, he looked like his old self. So, you know, if anyone doesn't know, like I, said, I don't know how many matches people were able to watch or not watch. So he was at one point, I want to say like 14 and one or 14 and two, maybe, and ranked as high as 14th in the country and was just lights out. You know, we were talking about amazing things with them. And, and all of a sudden, it's like he hit a wall and, and just couldn't get past it. And he, he did get hurt. Um, he was sick. He got, he, well, he got hurt first, then he got sick. And my mentality for a young kid like that is, hey, you got to learn to wrestle through it. So I just, you know, we had a few matches where he wasn't or he didn't wrestle. And then I'm like, listen, you got to get back out there. Like, you don't, you don't, you know, you got to learn to wrestle injured because you could be injured at the end of the year. You could be sick at the end of the year. And ultimately, I don't know if that, those were the reasons, but at some point his injury went away, his sickness got better and he still wasn't wrestling very well. So they were, you know, like I said, it wasn't just a match here and there. It was about, it was about a, a four week period where he just wasn't wrestling very well, wasn't wrestling very well in the room. Um, you know, I think that, as a coach, I tried to, I don't want to say blame things, but you try to, you try to find the reasons and you try to isolate them and, and nothing was really working at some point. It's like all of a sudden he just flipped the switch back and wrestled a lot better and uh, looked a lot better. And that was against central Michigan. And he looked a lot better against central. He ended up losing the match on a really, really bad call by the same officials that had a lot of really, really bad calls this past weekend. But at the end of the day, you know, that, that the match didn't hurt him. He ended up wrestling really well against Bloomington. And like I said, the MAC tournament wrestled about as well as he could have. Um, the score was way higher in the finals than what it, you know. I think he gave up the last. He gave up two takedowns at the very end where he just uh, tried things, to score some points, which I had no problem with that. He's trying to beat the guy ultimately. So ultimately, he made the finals. There was only one bit at the weight, so now he's got to wait for a potential wild card. He actually yeah. does have a, a, an okay case for it. Um, I, so I mean, you got that you leave it in the hands of the of the coaches and the committee, and that's just how it goes. And you get what you get, right, Jim? It's that, at the end of the day, you know, after the tournament, I thought all right, maybe he had a little bit of a chance. Um, I would say, you know, maybe forty percent chance. Yesterday, I started following some things, and like, man, it doesn't look very good for him. But then after today, I got a lot of emails, a lot of text messages from people that uh, that are in this business that believes. You know, a lot of a lot of tweets from people that were sending me what, what other people were tweeting that he does have a real good chance at it. So you never know. You don't no one really knows what the exact formula is. All I know is that there's three guys that are at the national tournament that he's beaten. Um, there could be more as they start adding more. Um, but right now there's three, and that seems like a pretty good number after doing it, mainly because everybody got into the tournament that was expected to get in at 165. So there aren't you know, the, those last ones they hold, 
they don't have to give them to other kids that didn't qualify because it seems like a lot of people made it. So yeah. Enrique, hopefully will be one of those people is what we're hoping. We're knocking on wood and, you know, crossing our fingers and everything that you got to do to, to get an extra at-large bid. And at 149, I saw, uh, you know, obviously Austin Gomez has to get one of those bids. I mean, unless you've been under a rock, that guy gets a bid. Not yeah. a lot of the high-end guys at the weight lost, is your point. And 165, I just tweeted it out. I feel 165 this year can be like 149 in 2008. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with you. It's, it's a tough weight class and – I mean, you got, you, know, you got, you got how many NCAA finals, how many NCAA champs, a couple NCAA champions at the weight. It's pretty yeah. good weight class, you know? Oh, yeah, it's a pretty good weight class. 100%. It's a great weight class, you know, O'Toole, Carr, both NCAA champions, the same conference, wrestling yeah. in the streets, no ducking each other. I like that. Um, Quincy Monday's up at 65. Um, yeah. I, uh, listen, Alenic, I like Alenic's, uh, uh, you yeah. know, chance for the Mid American Conference. That's who Enrique lost in the finals. And, I like Alenic, man. I think Alenic's a solid top ten guy, and he's he's right there in that top twelve tier, which is where you got to be to be you know be in that top eight and have a chance to get into that blood round, right? Hundred percent. You know, and I've always 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 believed since the, the the day I started as a head coach that when you get to the national tournament, you got to be healthy. You got to have a little bit of luck, meaning, you know, with the brackets, how people fall on you sometimes, and, and we'll get to how people fall on a bracket. You, you can use one hundred and forty nine as an example. Um, in our conference tournament, but having a little bit of luck, being healthy, and just wrestling your best. So the combination of those three things are so, so important at the end of the year. And uh, when I say luck in a bracket, people are like, what are you talking about? You look at um, um, how our our, our uh, Cody Kamara did the MAC tournament. Everyone's like, well, what happened to him? How, you know, he did this. Cody Kamara went in there as the seventh seed, ultimately. And I think he was dead on. It was just, it was by far the toughest weight class in the MAC conference. He goes in as a seventh seed. He ends up placing seventh. But you're like, all right, well, you know, all the other years he went in as a seventh seed, but but he, you know, he placed higher. He rushed, he lost to the guy who took third and the guy who took fourth. And if you really look at the weight class, those two guys were like the number one and number two seed going into it. So he lost to the number one and two seed because he fell on them because they both got upset. So and he met him in the background. So you know, if the bracket falls a different way, or maybe he's in a different spot, maybe he gets the eighth seed, or maybe he gets a sixth seed, he ends up on a totally different side of the bracket, wrestles a different person, and it's a completely different outcome sometimes. Those things you can't control. And Cody Kamara was the seventh seed. He plays seventh. Years in the past, and there's always going to be upsets in, in brackets. It just depends on where you fall and who you fall on. And what you hope is you hope that someone has an upset, and then they lose, and then they fall on you. That's what you hope for. You know, when you really – breaking it down. So that's when I say you have a little bit of luck with the bracket. I mean, unless you're one of those top guys, like it doesn't matter who, who uh, certain guys have. And, and that's just how that, those guys are really, really good for most of the guys. To, you, know, you look at back when, when uh, our, our guy took third, if you look at his bracket, besides wrestling Colin Moore twice, his entire bracket was lucky. It really was. He wrestled the third seed guy from Oklahoma state. Um, I'm talking about Kyle Cannell. That is, in the first round, so he wrestled a match to get into the tournament, and, and he barely won. Like, when I say barely won, I think it was four to three. Then he wrestled the, the third seed that Tech called him earlier in the year. That kid had a bad knee. From there, he ended up beating the guy, right, because the guy had a bad knee. From there, he's wrestling, I think it was, like, another seeded guy, and he went out and threw the guy. Uh, South Dakota State guy. Yes, who was on paper way better than him, but he threw him on his back for, for six points in the first you know, 45 seconds. And when you've got a six-point lead, especially upperweights, it's hard to come back. Yeah. So end up- Nate Roder. Nate Roder should have beat him. He should have never beat Nate Roder. And then yeah. he matches up with uh, Colin Moore, Colin. beats Colin, pins Colin Moore, and yep. then he's pinned by Machiavelli, and in, in who is it being the champ? You know, it's just like, yep. it's crazy. Listen, him and Casey Sparkman were like the same dude that year, record-wise, yep. double-digit losses. You wild know. hearted in uh, canal stole a spot to get into the ncaa tournament that's correct he did he and, stole and a spot like, to get in he stole the second place didn't he, he yes he stole. you know he stole it and he like i said he, he did, wasn't bringing a spot so he stole he it he didn't earn a spot like for example he, he took a third he took a third yes but he had to take third at the weight class so he took he took a third in a tournament for third and fourth he wrestled so that's all he had to do yeah 
but he he didn't bring that spot. No, he might have been able to get an, an at large bid on the back end because he was like that 28, 29, 30, 30 first guy that didn't get a spot. But yeah. you don't know that. You know, yeah. and last year, last year, Jake Perry was that guy who we thought was the 28, 29, 30. Like, all right, if he doesn't get in, he'll get a spot on the back end, and he didn't. So you never know. So essentially, he ended up stealing a spot, and then from there, he takes third in the country. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. just wild. And I remember, like, that same year, Tariq Wilson had a crazy run. Yeah. Because they're both Northeast Ohio guys. And it was just like, it was in Cleveland, and it was just a wild. And the, uh, the probably the greatest team race ever between Penn State and uh, yep. Ohio State was decided by Bo Nickel pill, pinning Miles Martin. Yep. <laughs> and then, you know, um, Kyle beat Colin Moore twice. I mean, it's just, it's yep. just crazy, man. The whole thing. Is, and I just don't think people understand how tough it is. Um, you know, you guys, I think, what were you, 22 bids this year, Jim? Was that what you guys had? Totally? I think it was 22 for a conference. Either 22 or 23. Like, yeah, so I believe it was 22. We'll get a few on the back end here. Like 49, I, I think the kid from uh, um, South Dakota State is going to get one. So we'll Southern get a Illinois. few. Southern Illinois. So, yeah, Southern Illinois. Illinois will get one. Yeah. yeah. yeah he'll get one. So, who may have those spots here? Yeah. So, okay. And potentially uh, Enrique. And as we're Enrique. Thinking, obviously, Buffalo. I'd like to see Buffalo get some. I'd like to see Cleveland State get one. Listen. I'm cheering for those guys. I want those guys in. I cover those teams. I wrestled in that conference. I want those guys in. Yep. It's yep. good for your conference to get the I we we're cheering for those guys. We want those guys in. We want 100%. the Buffalo guys in. We want the Cleveland State guys in. We want those guys in. The more the conference gets, you know, the better the conference looks. And you got three high end guys in Noto, um, Lenick. And then obviously Laird are three yep. guys that I think are threats to place. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if you've got any other higher end guys than them who you would throw into a category with those guys, but those guys are three of the higher ranked guys, and those are guys yep. that we need those guys to be all Americans. We need 100%. Like, we we need that. I don't care what any, like you guys might hate each other during the duels and during the season, but you gotta be pulling for each other. I'd rather see two Mac guys hit in the round of twelve. And have one of them be an All American, then yep. four Mac guys hit four Big Ten guys and have no All Americans. I might get hit by lightning right now, but uh, the 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 eighty four pounder from OU man, the Revere kid. I can't think of his name right now. Layman. 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 Layman looked about as good as he's ever looked. He's young. Yeah. He's going for sure. He's the guy because he can wrestle on top, and big guys sometimes you can. You know, the way they were calling the, the, the roar. Now, you're a big guy. You get a boot in on a big guy and you're stuck there for 45 seconds, you know, at, at the right time of a match. He's a guy that could, could figure out how to win some matches to, to do that. And, uh, you know, we use our, our rival. But on the back end of it, man, like I said, we're hoping that anyone. Jake, I, 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 think, I want Zane Lehman to place. I want him yeah. to be a threat. I want him to be around for the round of 16 and the round of 12. That's just me. People can yeah. hate me. They can be mad about <laughs> it. But I want that guy to do good. I want Sal Perrine to do good. I, yeah. I, I don't care, you know, whether Kent State gets them or not, they're Mac guys. I want the Mac guys to do good. I mean, that's just yeah. that's just me, you know, that's just how I feel about it. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just I want to see Southern Illinois get more guys in. I, you know what I mean? I just I want to see oh yeah, I want to see Lockhaven win. Listen, Lockhaven wins the Mac championship, right? Two years in a row, back to back. There's this crazy fight thing, right? Northern yeah. Illinois, Lockhaven guy getting a fight, two separate punching incidents. Right. Yeah. I call it like I see it. And then people get mad at me. I'm like, well, okay. Central Michigan probably wins the tournament. If that guy gets thrown out, like he should. Am I wrong? No, you're hundred percent right. And you know, at the end of the day, I don't, I, you know, kids, kids make mistakes. Kids, things happen all the time with kids. Yeah. As the official that needed to be called regardless of who it's against and yeah. put it this way. You know, like I said, there was a lot. Like it's, it seemed to be the the, the, t the talking point of the tournament, but at some point, that's the official's fault for not stopping it. And and yeah, you know, I also agree that the the head official was there. The head official of all the of all officiating was at our tournament. He just decided yeah. to come this year. He was sitting at the table. It happened. Why more than? And I, I get his stance was that I'm not. I have no role in this. I'm just a spectator. But at some point, there should have been someone stepping in and saying, "Listen, this kid cannot go any further." Maybe he missed it. You know, maybe he didn't see the throws, the punt, yeah. the throw, the throws, punt, the swung at. But at some point, you know, if it was my kid, I wouldn't have sent him back out there. I would have thrown every brick I had. 
Um, I think Lock Haven or, or Northern Illinois was just more concerned about make you know calming their guy down. There were some things that might have been able to done. But like I said, the heat of the moment, it was easy for me to sit there and watch it and say, that's, yeah, that's what I would have done. I wouldn't have thrown my guy back out there until someone looked that over and made sure they saw what everyone else saw. Depending on, you know, the, our officials at this tournament were horrible, man. And, you know, I I got so many videos set from people like watching at home going, how can a referee make this call? We had one in the first, in the very first match at uh, 141 against the, the eventual champion. And ultimately we lost by one point. And I believe there was a, a time, there was two opportunities that, that, that back points were like, our guy, the, the referee didn't even count. So we're throwing out the brick in the very first match of the tournament. And they come back and they's like, no, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't two. So you're like, all right, it wasn't two. Then you come back and you watch it on video and you're like one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three. And then like, and then they stop and how do they not give it even when we have instant replays? Amazing to me. Jim, they're reviewing their own calls. I know. I understand that. But at some point, that's why we put it in place. So they, you know, no one's perfect. I'll be the first one to admit when I'm wrong. Like, you know, you know, and one thing is part of being a, a man is just admitting when you're wrong with things at sometimes, yeah. and, you know. I'll be the first one when I tell there's a lot of, a lot of situations where I screw up and do the wrong thing. Your, your nephew, I screwed up and I didn't make the right, do the right thing as a coach at that point. It was hard at that point. I didn't make excuses. Didn't blame the officials. It was probably all on me and, and mad at the time. At some point, these officials, it's all like they have the opportunity to go and fix things and they still don't fix them, which is, it's, it's really like, we bizarre. have that. Yeah, it's it bizarre. is. It's, bizarre. it's like actually totally bizarre. Like there's just a couple more I've, I've been watching. I'm re-watching all the conference finals now. I did the Big Ten already. I'm in the middle. I did a, the ACCs, and I'm in the middle of the Big 12 right now. I'm on the tail end of the Big 12, I paused it to put my kid to bed and come do this. And, um, yeah, man, there's just things you see, and there's just all, like some head-scratching things. I'm like, how is this happening? And it's very crisis. We're in a crisis right now. We're in a crisis <laughs> at all the long No, not, not, listen, I was at the OAC – Junior high state championships. Kid shot in on a high crotch. The other kid stuffing him was crushes him, flattens him out. The other kid's hanging out for dear life. Right? The kid who shot in and took the offensive attempt. The official called the kid who was hanging on the leg for stalling. Yeah. And I'm like, I I, I lost my mind. I'm like, what, what, <laughs> what happened? Yeah. I'm like, the guy who took the offensive shot and was hanging in there and you know, tiring himself out, yeah. weathering the storm from the other guy. It's calling, and I was like, "What is it? you know?" It's just that's a microcosm, right? And there's there's fifteen other things in that day, but the oh, yeah. they don't pay the guys enough. Yeah, they, well, they're, at, at the, they're not at the Mac term, At the Mac tournament, we're paying our guys a lot of money, so you know these these guys are well, still in enough. Different. Yeah, still in enough. <laughs> Then, then, then don't do it if it isn't enough. But at some point, you got you got to be able to make the right call. That's why we put the answer. But you got two guys on the mat. It's crazy to me. We, we there yeah. was an incident with Jake Ferry in his wrestle in his true match. Jake Ferry has a, a single leg. He covers the other ankle, pulls it in. They don't call. They say time was up. I throw the brick out. They don't call. At some point, like all right, I I couldn't see both at the same time. So Jake Ferry's brother sends him the video of it, who then sends it to me. And he had, so he has a single, he grabs the ankle, covers it, he's moving, and you see the clock going down from three, two. So he has the ankle at two, he's now covering it at one, it goes to zero, and they still don't get it right. They're seeing the same thing that, that I just saw. How can, to purposely not overturn it, it's just, it's, it, it, drives, it drives me crazy as a coach, that's all. Okay, here's the next they, thing. Here's the next thing. Well, that wasn't synced up with the actual clock. That was just a graphic on the screen. They'll say that it, it's just, dude, it's like, it doesn't even like, it is, it, it is insane. I don't even know what to do about it. Like sitting here, <laughs> my thing is like, I saw at the district tournament this week, a kid pinned another kid out of bounds, but he had yeah. two supporting points in. They come back, two refs have a discussion. They wave the pin off. They, and there was, there was the guy pinned him with 12 seconds left. The other guy was just laying on his back stunned with a concussion or something. So they don't even give the guy who pinned the guy any points. They don't give him two points, nothing. One okay. nine, one and a third, it changes the whole complexion of the match. Two yep. one, change, the guy ends up losing nine one who pinned the other guy. I'm like, yeah, what are we doing, man? And it's, and it's like, I'm not here to just, I'm not here to dump on the refs, man. That's not what I'm here yeah. to. 
I just want them to get better. I want them to, I want everybody to get better. That, that, yep. that would be it. I, just, I just want it fixed and I want, I just want it to be better. I want a third party reviewing their, their calls, not them. That's what we need to do as a conference. Get a third party in there. Well, not just, just, no, it's not even a conference. No, it's it's the whole thing, man. Well, at the, at the national tournament, they have a third party in the back room reviewing it. So that's a little better. And that's and something we've talked all about. All the conferences have to do that then. Yes. Well, then that, that, that that's a money thing. Can your conference afford it? And do they? you have the video set up for it? We're going to really try to do it next year at our MAC tournament. It's something that we're going to try to do. Um, I know the coaches want to do it. So you're having, so you aren't having the same person that made the call review it because. People are too proud and don't want to, don't want to, they don't want to change. What it is. I really think that's what it is. Okay. Lewis Newell dropped down to 133, had the number one seat on the ropes. You see uh, the match? His, his leg cramped up. He got, cr- he couldn't walk back to the center of the mat. Um, they, 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 besides that, you know, that wasn't even, that wasn't, like I said, there were a lot of points that were scored that weren't given. That's the frustrating part. Our guy takes third, that guy goes down and wins a turn. Does end up really another close match. At all, so they're like I said. That's one of those situations where you, you. Yeah, I wish you would didn't wrestle in the first match. I wish it would have been down the ropes. I think I, I wish they were on separate sides of the bracket. On the same sense, Lewis Noel was a one thirty three uh, thirty three pounder from day one. They stepped on to Kent. Um, he, he, you know, he's best friends with uh, Fenton, who was at one thirty three. So he went one forty one. They both they transferred decided, in together, right? They they transferred. Well, they Fenton transferred in first, and then Lewis transferred in the semester after. So really a semester later um and it was like an agreement almost and then as soon as fenton's gone lewis makes the cut and he looked ama- you know he wrestled five matches in, in the wrestlebacks looked amazing no one was close to him didn't have a close match at all um i, I just wish he would have either there would have been better officiating or i wish that he would have seen him later on in the tournament but ultimately both of those were on him personally and and i think that you know it's, it's going to be a good we, we had the day off today just give our guys two days off it's gonna be something I talked to. We got a lot of a lot of young guys that are jammed up in the bottom of the, you know, a lot of young guys from the 25 to 49, and they're all they get along great. At some point, you gotta be able to compete against your buddy and you gotta be able to in the room kind of push away things and make sure you get to the right weight class. If you can't make agreements with your friends, you have to be in the right weight class ultimately. It's gonna be like I said, a real good Lewis have another year. He does, but he's already got a job. He, you know, he's wrestling for five years, he's moving, moving on. He doesn't want to get a master's degree. Um and at the end of the day, you know, he's going to graduate and he's pretty happy just to, to, to move on at this point. All right. I'd love to have him for another year at the right weight class. I think it'd be great, but I don't think he's ready to do that. Okay. Well, he's got some time to think about it, actually. He does. And if something changes, we'll see. But he, he's got a really good job, <laughs> making a, a, a good amount of money, more than most uh, college graduates. So I, I think that's the route he'll go. Well, good for Lewis. I mean, hey, we talked about this. You know, Fenton, Fenton's going to end up getting a degree. Isn't that what yep. this is all about, Jim? Isn't that what you want? 100%. For you want Fenton to get a degree. You want Lewis yep. to get a degree. You want these guys to get degrees. They're not there. Nobody's really going on to an RTC. No. Got Dustin Kilgore, and you got Ian Miller and Nick Badlion, right? Danny Mitchell. The, what other guys are in wrestling doing it for a living that are that are your guys? Mike De Palma. Okay, Mikey De Palma, right? Yep. So I just named five, and those are the five that are doing it for a living. You got 100%. Okay. 100%. Well, I mean that that that's where we want to be. That's what it's about, though. Um, yep. Cover placed Cover, right? Cover went out. And we talked about you know that he's a good good soldier for you, a good troop. Yep. Guy who did everything he could. Came back another year, got another degree. What's it like having a guy like Jacob Cover on your team? We've had him on the show before, but what's it like just having a guy like that around? Maybe he never makes an NCAA tournament, but um, you know, he's the future of the United States of America. Teaching. Yep. Good, great, just a great, great all-around guy who's probably going to donate back to your program eventually. What's it like seeing a guy like that go out with a placement at the MAC tournament? Uh, I think placing was, you know, it, it, it's what his, what his goal was. It was it was my goal for him. And I talk, I was in an administrative meeting today with my administrator, and you know, sometimes I rather have guys just like Jacob Covert than other guys that win a lot of matches that do a lot of the wrong things that doing it and along the way where he did everything the right way. He just wasn't as athletically gifted as, as he wants to be or he, him not not being better isn't because of work ethic it isn't because of knowledge it isn't because of any of it. he just he's, he's probably you know he's a very small heavyweight um like i said not to say small heavyweights have a you know hard time being good he just he just he isn't very fast he's you know he's an explosive he's just a a 200 
30 pound guy, you know, walking around that, that loves the sport and has given it all for his entire life. And he's, he's the kind of person that, that I looked and said, man, I, I would take a guy like that any day of the week, get him on my team. Leadership, the, the, the stuff that he brought to my team is un you can't even measure it. It's unmeasurable how much he's brought to our, our, our program and the things that, he, you know, just how smart he is. And, and uh, like I said, it, it, it's, been, it's been a great to have him. Same thing with Cody at this point. I don't think Cody came in as that type of person. With Cody leaving, man, a guy like that is so valuable to our program. And, and they left their little bit of their legacy. I don't want to say maybe in this year, but on all the freshmen, because all my freshmen, like I've got like 20 freshmen on our team, got to see these guys work every day. And they understood how, that they might not have the most success, but it isn't because of lack of working and lack of effort and the lack of doing the right things and training and living that lifestyle, we say. So that's all you can ask for for your guys for the most part. And like I said, they're both have full-time jobs waiting for them. They're just, you know, getting ready to, to finish their academic careers up. Cody Kamara, you know, he's a Mac champ for you, a couple time qualifier, yep. um, you know, like a guy, like you said, a lunchbox guy, you know, brings his lunchbox to work every day, goes to work, gave you a max effort, but he learned and he developed. And that's ultimately what you guys are trying to do. You want to develop them, you know, not as just, as wrestlers, but as, as people, as students, as athletes, but like, what has he meant to your guys' program? You know, he won a Mac title for you last year on, on, Hey, on a crazy thing in the semifinals where the guy's shoulder yeah. go back in, yeah. um, you know, let's not, let's not act like that wasn't a crazy unprecedented weird thing. Oh yeah. And, and, you know, a break went your way on that, but when a guy can't get his shoulder back in socket, can't wrestle. Yeah. You can't wrestle. That's just the fact of that. And I know, George Mason was pretty mad about that, but they ended up getting their first Mac champ. So shout out to George Mason. We want more of their guys in the, in the, uh, in the hunt for the NCAA tournament as well. But Cody Kamara, what has he been like uh, coaching and, and and watching him develop as a, as a person? Yeah, we, we always refer to Cody as uh, young Cody and old Cody would never be able to, if they cross paths again, they wouldn't know, they wouldn't recognize each other because it was so, they were so Cody came in as a junkyard dog, did all the wrong things didn't take academics seriously, um, did so many things wrong. You're like, yeah, this kid's not going to make it. Took him to about probably three semesters before me yelling at him. And, and you know, uh, the old saying, I can send you back home to, to Beaver County or, or, you know, in Freedom, Freedom High School, and you can go dig ditches back there. If that's, you know, I gave one of those speeches. And and uh, I think somewhere in there, and along with getting a girlfriend, kind of set him in the right track to start making much better decisions. And it, you know, I can sit there and say it was me, but it's probably more the girlfriend than it was me. He's uh, his girlfriend is uh, Colin Moore's sister, someone who understands wrestling, has been around it her whole life. Um, so I, probably more the girlfriend than it is me. But at the same sense, the transition that he made, you don't really see it in our sport that often, as far as kids going from this low to that high. It's being a MAC champ, and and like I said, at some point in our conference, winning a MAC title is is. What we have more MAC titles than we do all Americans across the board, if that makes sense. So we had ten. We we, we gave 10, 10 MAC titles last year. We we had or ten MAC titles last year. We had no all Americans. Year before that, our conference might have had one or two, you know, all Americans. So a lot of what we're doing is for our guys to go out and win MAC titles and bring home MAC championships. That's a big part of what we're trying to do for our our program and our university and everything. And he brought one of those home, and and I would have probably bet my house on it going into it that wasn't going to happen. So. You know, there's an example of a guy that just that just made it happen and did everything the right way, and some things fell his right. You know, some things fell his way, but just been a staple in our program for six years. I'm I'm glad I'm glad he was on our team and not somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, there's no question about a guy like that. He's just he's an awesome guy, like you said, junkyard dog that figured it out, learned how to do some other things, uh, and change his wrestling and live right. Right, living right's the biggest part yeah. of it. And Lifestyle. Maybe we've been talking about Colin Moore a lot. A lot a lot of Colin Moore talk. I don't make him better than that guy, by the way. Great guy, yeah. great guy, great family. I, you know, as you're alluding to with his, uh, you know, his sister and Cody dating and changing Cody for the better. So shout out to the Moore family here. I like that. Um, Coach, any other guys that kind of impressed you between, besides those seniors and Enrique? Well, Blake Schaefer took took set or it took eighth in our tournament. And anytime you put a a true freshman out there that, you know, I don't. He's he wrestled one ninety seven. He's if you look at him, he's six foot probably five and he's just really tall and gangly and he's his tough and nails kid he just needs to get stronger and get better but you know we kind of put him out there because he was he was our best guy by far wasn't ready to be a, a division one starter 
but did a really good job during the year. Won a lot of matches for us. Um, I think he got to he he he's, he he's told Malik and myself that if he wasn't wrestling, he probably would have made a lot of the a lot of really bad freshman mistakes outside of outside of it. Meaning the best thing for him was to wrestle. Now when he does red shirt, he'll be able to really stay focused on you know what what, what needs to be done during a red shirt year because he's one of those guys that you got to keep your thumb on a little bit. Great student. Got to keep your thumb on him a little bit. Um, you know, wants to get at it in, in in life itself, I guess you could say. But if you really talk to him, he's glad he wrestled this year. And I think that uh, our plan is to redshirt him, you know, maybe next year, if not next year, the following year. But I think as soon as he has that redshirt, you're, you're going to see a lot more from him. Just so he'll be able to develop physically and and hopefully, you know, put on put on some muscle. Um, you know, if he puts on a lot of muscle, he'll end up being a heavyweight. And that's kind of what our goal is for him. Uh, but we'll see how fast that can happen. Between here and Tulsa, we don't know how many guys you got left. Enrique can still get in. Um, what are the travel plans? Do you leave Monday? We leave Tuesday. We always we always leave on Tuesday, early Tuesday. You know, it's a, it's a full day of travel by the time you get to the airport, get there. We, we're actually flying into Oklahoma City, which is about two hours away by the time you get your car. You know, it's going to be a 10-hour day just traveling. Um, good thing we have Danny. You know, Danny will be able to work out with Jake when they get there. We'll, find, we'll get them a workout in. Um, and then at some point, you know, they'll have all day Wednesday just to kind of you know, kind of zero in on what what his what his goals are and what his plans are, and you know, a lot of the time, you know, kids are still going to school. And if you're, we got back this week is by the time that they're back and settled, you've been gone for four days. They're back now. All of a sudden, you turn around, you start practicing. We start practicing tomorrow, and all of a sudden, it starts all over, and they're gone for a week. So, the one good thing with him is he's in grad school. He's only taken I want to say I think it's like six credits, six credits because he's graduated, so he doesn't have what classes aren't a big deal. But there's a lot that goes into, you know, to, to preparing yourself mentally to, to get ready for the week. And, and that's where he's at right now. And like I said, with Enrique, um, maybe, I don't, maybe, I don't know if Wild, you know, I would think Wildcard, we don't know until Wednesday, where usually we found it on Tuesday. This year it's Wednesday. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for kids. Um, one thing with Enrique is that I don't think he overthinks things. So at, at the that's end good. of the day. <laughs> that's good. I don't think, I think that, uh, you know, if he gets in, he'll be ready to go. And the biggest concern would probably be his weight at that point. But we, we were, you know, we're practicing tomorrow. We're making, told him, I've called him, I've texted him, I've done everything. Say, hey, listen, make sure your weight stays under control. You know, let's hope and pray that you, you, we do get you. We, we have to make weight a few more times before, before this year is over. All right, last thing, Ohio High School State Tournament. You're a couple-time placer and a champ. Um, you a freshman placer? I, I placed a freshman as a freshman. And then what were your other placements? I placed as a freshman my sophomore year. I didn't play. I didn't actually even qualify. Kind of got not not blaming. I got hurt. I got hurt um, right at the end of the season, and then I just never really got going again. Um, you know, and as a young kid, I thought that you know you do it once, figure out can't be that hard. I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it going when the time comes. I just you know went to mentor the meat back meat in the world, meat grinder, it was meat grinder, real meat grinder. And one of the things too is that people like most people don't remember this, Zeb, but you'll you'll maybe remember it. Um, or if not, you probably heard your brothers talking about it back then is you had to get to the semis or you were, you know, you were out. Yeah. So it's follow your man. Yep. And if your man didn't make the semis, you were out. Now the guy, if your man didn't win the semis, you were out. Oh, you had, you're going to make the finals. That's what it was. Your guy had, yeah. Back then your guy had to make the finals. So I lost. You had game. to make the semis for you to guaranteed to be in. Yes. Otherwise you wanted a really tough draw where you knew the guy was going to go like if it was one of the St. John's or Roger Chandler or whoever. Yes. You wanted one of those guys. And I, I was the number one. Like, I, you know, I took first of my sectional, so I came out, and then I won my first match. My second match, I lost to uh, a guy that took – it would have been second at a different district. And then uh, I got upset by him, and then he went on to lose the eventual champ in the semis, so I got kicked out of the tournament. Oh, wow. And then what did you place as a junior? Junior, I took fourth. Um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of if, ands, and buts. That's back when if you if you touch the line, you're out. I hit a five pointer, my foot touched the line. Guys on his back, they blew the whistle. I got back up. I ended up losing by one in the semis. Went back to the fourth. Probably was the third or second best guy in the, in, the, in the weight class. Um, wasn't the fourth best. Just you know, you're upset. You don't win. You come back. I won my next one. Didn't win for third and fourth. Still pretty upset about it. And my senior year, I finally won it. And then you beat Plaus in the finals, didn't you? I'd be Plaus from Akron North. Yes. I think it might be a relative that went to the. It's Adam Plaus's brother. I think. It's Adam Plaus's brother. 
Okay, a brother, cousin, I'm not sure what it was. And, yeah, listen, that, that guy put my washer in. <laughs> Adam Plowson? No, the guy you beat in the state oh, finals see. put my washer in. I wasn't here, and my wife got all the information. The Plows guy put the washer in. <laughs> well, at one point, he was at Pitt, Pitt going to school. He wrestled for Pitt. They recruited him. Um, I don't know if he ended up ever ended up graduating now, but maybe you know, maybe he owns a business and he and he you know, yeah, he's probably he's short, to... short on guys. Um Sorry, guys. what are you looking for at the Ohio State tournament in a recruit? Um, guys that are offensive. Um, you know, not nowadays guys that can make sure they can get away. It's really important with the way our sport is. Hopefully, with some of these new rules that they, they've asked us to comment on, we're gonna go back to how it used to be rather than the way it is right now because there's not a whole lot of action when you're on top and bottom if you know how to ride real well. You can ride real well. You can ride a guy forever now. So hopefully they're going to go back to – you have to be trying to get back points. Um, so being able to get away into rides is important. But just kids that are offensive, you know, at, the, at that level, if you're if you're recruiting a kid and, and you have a, even a doubt that he's not offensive enough, it's probably enough reason to maybe back off him a little bit or change your – how good he'll be in college. Because if you're not offensive in, in, in high school, you're definitely not going to be as offensive in, in college. And usually it's just a bad formula. Or a bad recipe at the end of the day. Heard that, Coach. All right. Well, I will <laughs> see you in Columbus. You got anything else for me? No, just, you know, uh, we, we, so I got a little little bit. We got a kid and a kid named Billy Meisner and uh, um, Pedro Castro. Both of them are true freshmen. So they both wrestled 141. So Billy Meisner wrestled the guy from Clarion who won, the, who won it. He wrestled him at the Edinburgh in the first round of the Edinburgh Open three weeks ago. And beat him 11-4. And then uh, Cat, Pito Castro wrestled in our dual meet, the kid from Lock Haven who was in the finals. And they went to overtime. Pito ended up losing. Um, but uh, we got both these guys that are that are freshmen that, you know, one beat the, the eventual MAC champ. The other one went to overtime with both these guys are national qualifiers. So we, we've got a lot of talent in our room as far as younger kids. Um, that doesn't automatically mean we're going to, we're going to have success next year. We might register guys. We have Keegan Nab at 157 who did an amazing job. Everybody that watches him wrestle loves how he wrestles. Cause he's just a, he's a go. He just goes He's hundred miles a minute. At some point he needs to almost slow down his pace and maybe think about things a little bit more or learn to react a few different ways that we need to, you know, some, some of his reactions aren't the right way. And I think it's just, he's too fast maybe. Um, but we, we got him, we got, you know, Blake Schaefer, who's a returning guy. So we have a lot of young, good talent in our team. I say we've got about six or seven guys ready to be Division One wrestlers next year. Does that mean success? Not at all. But in the same sense, I would say two years down the road, I think after we get a lot of these guys some experience, we could uh, we could redshirt um, um, Keegan and also Blake. We're trying to get Enrique's year back from last year because he got hurt and didn't wrestle at the conference tournament. And you probably know better than anybody how many – guys are out there in their sixth seventh year because they got years back yeah we're trying to get his year back we're putting together a petition right now with the ncaa so people are like well next year you'll be better and you know next year having a bunch of freshmen in this tournament is not a, a good recipe to go out and win but hopefully they can go there and hold their own the ones we have in the tournament and i think the year after that is when i believe that we'll be we'll have the the guns on our team to to go to to go to war i guess or, or to, to battle with does that mean we're going to have success I think we'll have a lot more success than we've had the last few years. But in the same sense, there's a lot of learning from now into, into two years. I just know that, like I said, we can keep all those guys together. We've got about seven guys that I just mentioned that are going to be in our in 10 starters. We've got two really recruits that we've already com that have already committed 